So we're gonna do, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now we're gonna do one hand. So just one hand only. So go over there to that little outcropping of higher weeds there. Yep. So just one hand, right hand only. Yep. So pull it, take the left hand off completely. You can kind of reset it. Yep. Figure out where it needs to go. Pull it back and then just start whipping it and make it more aggressive, bigger. Yep. So then instead of hitting down, let's hit more sidearm. There we go. And then go ahead and turn your shoulders more. Which way? Uh, round and around, right? Flatten them out. Good. All right now, look at the pieces of grass. All right? I don't want you just aimlessly hitting something down there. Pick a piece of grass and chop it down. All right? So this one right here is a good one. All right? So start over, pull it back, and chop that down. There you go. Now pick a new one. Yep. Good. Okay, now do the left hand. See how good the left hand then is, is that kind of Super mowing. anger management. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got a therapy <laughs> session here. <laughs> there we go. Good. So there's an element of focus on kind of what you're hitting, but really not a location. You're not trying to hit this object and like stop at the ball or stop at the weed. You're going through it. And if you don't mow it down the first time, you just keep doing it until you eventually chop it down right so then we take a bigger tool we make it heavier and make it longer and then same thing you're going to kind of get it structured in your hands so that you can start kind of pulling it back and throwing it through whipping it down there mowing mowing grass there it is keep that going two more There you go. Good. Take a break. Because <laughs> what you find is you'll start kind of holding your breath. Yes, <laughs> I do to... that in every sport I do. <laughs> in the hallway. Like, yeah. yeah, they tell me to breathe. <laughs> Don't forget. Horse, breathe. Breathe. <laughs> they yell out, breathe. I swear. It's oh, the... really? That's, yeah. Always, yeah. Yeah. Well, jumps, you get your you get yourself kind of intently focused on that. So grab a sip of water. And they feel it too, by the way. The horses? Oh, they know. They feel that anxiety. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know they that. My wife uh, used to do like uh, like barrel riding oh, wow. and that kind of stuff. When, yeah, when she was she was young, her her family had I think maybe four horses. They had about eighty acres with that they had a little hobby farm and some in cattle. No, this is in uh, Kansas. Oh. Um, I met her after I came to college, and um, yeah, so she loved that barrel riding. But yeah, the horse knows, and if the you know what we what used to have to happen was the two horses that they had were that were buddies the one horse would really follow the other one so what would happen is her younger brother would get his turn to do the barrels but my wife would have to ride her horse on the outside of the arena up and oh. along the side yeah that's not a good, that's not good. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah but they they are they are herd animals anyway yeah and they have their buddies and yeah yeah so, all right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab your driver out of your set there. And you're basically going to, we're going to set up some, yep, that one. We're going to set up a, a, a white sphere weed for you to whack. So, now, we're connecting that tool with the ball, but we're not going to do it any differently than over here. So that's where I, I need you to flip that switch in your brain. Like I was going to ask you, uh, do I go back to what I was Not at all. Before? Never. <laughs> right? Which is easy to do, of course. Yeah, you haven't done it enough, which is good. You haven't done it so long that, I, you know, we're fixing all, you know, all these bad habits, right? Okay. So do some swings with no ball there and just feel like there's a, 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 a section of that long grass. Don't put your hands forward. Oh. See, when you weed whacked, oh, I wasn't doing you that, weren't no. doing that, right? So you're kind of hinging and swishing, hinging and swishing. Now, one thing you also notice is you were not moving your body around. You weren't shifting weight. You weren't thinking about weight transfer or yeah. none of that. Weed, yeah, you were just kind of planted yes. and going back and forth. That's what we want. So leave your feet planted, hinge and swish, hinge and swish. So do it a bunch in a row there. There you go. Right now, if you hit the ground with the the implement, yeah. 
your weed whacking angle is too vertical, right? So like we did over here, you're gonna have to clip the top of that oh, yeah. off. So you're gonna have to lower the angle and come more around your body to do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. There you go. Good. All right, so let's whack the top off of the weed. That ball needs to come flying through the air, but the T that it's sitting on, yes. we want it to stay there. So your focal point is the ball and swishing. There you go. I can't even see it. You didn't see that one? I heard it. Yeah. No, let's see. The in the air? It was in the air. <laughs> the TrackMan radar says it went 190 yards. Wow. So now you're playing golf. Yeah, I wasn't even trying to. <laughs> no. So there's, everybody has, you know, a starting point. Um, your weed whacking starting point showed me actually a lot of potential, which is good. Right? I don't, not everybody can stand up there and kind of create that repetition and the balance and the right arm swishing and throwing. Now we do know based on that, that your left arm didn't really know what to do. So good news is it's a two-handed sport. So you can basically send your left arm on vacation and just do it all with the right arm. Because if the left arm tries to jump in, uh, it's kind of like this swishing thing is about as strong as the weakest link. And if you let that left arm kind of get involved, it's going to reduce the potential of the right arm. All right. So here's what you do. You take your driver now. Well, don't tell anybody. I'm also a lefty surgeon. <laughs> and, uh, it's, and it's all micro. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm an eye surgeon. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, um, you know, it's this is like the most I do. Teeny little movements. That's all I do. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why it never develops strength. Doesn't or... have to do all that stuff, yeah. So grab your driver and flip it over and grab the other end, right? So I want you to hold it like that stick, right? So you're just going to hold it just in the right hand only because that's the one we're focusing on. And don't you don't have to go uh, repetitively fast. Let's just create some swishes. There you go. Good, right? Now, as you make your movements, you can see how you're maybe a little nervous that you might hit the stick on the ground. A little, yep. Right, so point it at me up here. Point it at my hand. Now go around and around, right? Swishing, swishing, swishing. So there's no part of you that's like, oh, I'm gonna hit the ground now, right? Because you're keeping it up here. So what I want you to do is just kind of tilt this angle down so that you're about a foot off the ground and then you're swishing on a slightly different plane, right? In this different angle. So that's how the little nuance of this game works. Your longest club in your bag is that one. So it's measured against this one. All right, so hold that one up next to it. So the average golf grip is about uh, 10 inches, yep. So there's a 10 inch difference there between those two clubs. Right, so if we think about this, so here, hold the hold the camera. The, you can be cameraman. Just hold it there and step over here for me. Yep. So now if we look at that difference in the playing position, now that difference is here in angles. So the weed whacking that you do with this guy is kind of more around this way. The weed whacking that you do with this one is more kind of up and down, right? So if I had to dig a trench like you can see people are doing here, this is the tool that I would use because it allows me to go up and down and then dig holes, right? So if I had to plant a row of carrots right here, which I've done this before because I just like practicing my golf game while I'm gardening, is I take a sand wedge out and I dig a trench. Now, the driver, its purpose is to not dig any trenches. Its purpose is to kind of go the fastest and hit the ball the furthest. So that's why we have a longer lever. I could put this exact same tool on a stick this long and my plane would be vertical. Problem is I just don't, I lost that much power. So my, my purpose is take this at the long end, pull it around, the swishes so as you can see as I'm swishing I'm not going side to side my ability to connect with one single moment in time would be compromised if I was doing this if I kind of lock in my feet lock in my legs 
this is where the strength from riding and everything is probably going to be helpful because you're, you're able to be here and then turn, swish, turn, swish, turn, swish this way. That's really good. My precision is in, way improved because I'm not doing that, right? So <laughs> let me show you what it looks like. It's not going to look a whole, diff whole lot different than what you just did. I'm showing it to you this way because this is not what you see when you play golf. When you play golf, you see someone take the club back, you see them come through, and they finish like this, that foot comes up. The entire purpose of this finish is like what one old school pro told me is like, if you're posing for the cover of Golf Digest, that's this, the only purpose is for the picture. Mm. If you get to this position before impact, which a lot of people do. You're gonna lose it. Yeah, ruins everything, right? So if I kind of sit, get strong here in my legs, I pull the club back, I swish it through, that's it. That was a good shot, Craig. That was a good shot. <laughs> Usually is because I'm not <laughs> complicating this thing, right? Now there was speed there. Where'd the speed come from? The right arm throwing swishing this the consistency is all related to how consistent this moves if this is moving all over my consistency just got erratic right but if it stays balanced and stable and my right arm learns to do the swish i can have power and consistency because that's just the way it works make sense yes so we'll keep your video rolling go ahead and tee one up there now you'll notice no part of me in that demonstration or our conversation so far has said you must like guide this face straight you must point it in the direction of the target right since we started like your comment made me kind of go down this road you hit a couple warm-up shots and you had this position that you were taught and all this stuff and then you said well it was going straight over here that made me go, okay, time out. He's, he's about to guide it. He's about to try to control that face. Now, if you held the club, so hold it up in the air here, and that's your grip, right? We're establishing the, your grip. Now, relax your grip, and I'm gonna put it on the this way, so. Okay, now, if you just started swishing this, eh, probably no chance you're gonna connect properly. Right? You're going to hit on this side. If you've got your hands on there correctly and the club is sitting there correctly, the alignment part, the hitting it straight part's over. You've already gripped it correctly. Sure. What most people do is they, they feel like that's not done yet. Like that job is, oh, now I have to like guide this through here and they get te tension in their hands and pressure in their hands. I never saw my shot. I knew it was good. Yeah. You saw it fly. Yes. It flew pretty straight, right? Yes, pretty straight. There was no part of me down here at that yeah, moment of impact no i wasn't i was just pulling it back and swishing so what's going to be revealed here is when you do this properly and you pull it back and swish the accuracy portion is kind of more based on timing right so do your grip if you can if you come through like this and your hands are kind of in ahead of this timing mm -hmm. Look where the club face is pointing. Slices it. Yep. If you came through here and your hands were back here and the wrists were like that, it might go a little bit more to the left. But we're not going to worry about that yet. All we're doing is kind of planting our legs, pulling it back, and swishing. There you go. Yeah. Good. Yep, go for it. There you go. Yep. Little dirt. Little dirt. Right? So if you get a little dirt, your positioning, your stick swishing location might have been too close to the ball because when you went to full extension, you ran in the ground a little bit. Yeah. But the good news is, is the tee is still there. So tee up another ball. Why is it important to keep the tee there, ideally? Yeah, so when you're driving the ball, your collision with that sweet spot of that club face, I'll show you. So bring that club head over here. See the center of the face? Yes. If you connect, it's barely gonna hit the top of the tee. Got it. Now, if you connect way down here, yeah. it'll probably break the tee or knock it out. It. Yeah, exactly. 
So we want that club coming basically right through the center of the, the sweet spot. And because you hit the ground there, a couple things probably happen. You either swung your plane down into the ground or you were too close and you just didn't have room. So you connected with the ground. So when you set up a driver, you're gonna hover the driver right at the back of the ball and every practice swing you make, no, hold it up in the air and hover it right there at that sweet spot. So come in like you're gonna hit that weed, come in a little closer, right there. Now don't put it on the ground, hold it up in the air because that's your goal is to now return to that same spot. So pull it back and then weed whack it. Very good. All right, we left the ball, we left the tee there, so we only hit the ball, that's good. And the reason why I'm having you hover is it makes total sense, it's completely logical. If I put the ball up here, say at this height on this bag stand, all right, it would make zero sense to address the ball way down here on the ground. Just like t-ball or baseball I'd like you to dress it up here yes. that ball is two inches in the air i want you to address the ball and not the ground which yep is, which is what i always previously did yeah because like 99 percent of golfers do that right but it's actually incorrect there you go yep so dress the ball and then weed whack it there you go great drive be than that. no that was really good any day. Yeah. Well, if you did that and you told someone, well, this is really my so second or third that. day you're <laughs> doing golf. Like say, no, yeah, like, exactly. They're like, oh, okay, yeah. you're sandbagging us like you're sandbagging. sandbagging. Yeah. <laughs> so when you, when you get set up, I want you to kind of clear your mind of some of the other stuff, right? This is way simpler than that, right? You just took a sigh of relief there because it seems like, oh, I might actually be able to do this thing. You know, because sometimes when you get up there and you go through this checklist that your friends have told you, relatives, other instructors, it seems like a lot. You know, it seems overwhelming. It'd be like you walking up to me and saying, all right, I'll see you in the arena in an hour. Here's your list of things you need to do to get your horse ready. I would like freak out. I have no idea because yeah. I'm actually afraid of horses a little bit. Right. Yeah. So to go all the way through that, it would it'd blow my mind. Right. So we want to simplify this. This is weed whacking. What you have is weed whacking tools that are varying in length. The game would be way simpler if we just, every golfer had one club and we just carried it and we walked. And I think honestly, it would be way more fun if we all just had one club and we hung sure. out and played. Pick your club. Yeah, this whole thing started with like Dukes and Earls having 20 like manservants carrying a cluster of 10 clubs on their shoulders and then eventually someone said okay that's not fair like the richest person can't always win like we need to limit this whole thing so we're going to go with 14 let's come up with a number 14 it is probably was the number that fit in a bag or something was it scotland Ireland? probably or scotland yeah i mean there's debates right now four or five hundred years ago there's versions of this actually in china and some other countries but Sure. the scots have claimed it right okay. so the tool now has changed so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch so your weed whacking tool i'm going to give you a pitching wedge and i want you to leave it on a t but now your t is going to get pushed Lower. down to the ground so that you will actually settle it on the ground so push it all the way down so your fingers kind of touch the grass good now you're going to take your same kind of grip but now this is a little heavier a little shorter your weed whacking angle is going to change. So let's rehearse that and see if we can get these wrists to kind of do that swishing motion. Good. Now what's going to be important when you play the game, especially with these kind of clubs, is we do hit a little bit of grass because the ball nestles in the grass. It doesn't sit always perfectly perched up. So you kind of have to dig it out of the grass a little bit. So as you start rehearsing, let's go ahead and hit the ground a little bit. Like I was digging a trench for my carrots. You can kind of do the same thing. Yep. There you go. Just a very shallow little ditch, little trench there. Okay, very good. Now you can scoot over, align yourself to the ball, raise it up, weed whack it. There you go. I'll take that in. <laughs>
most golfers would. You just hit a pitching wedge, about 120, I think. Let's see what the track man says. Yeah, right? So here's the, the track man right here. It says your carry distance was 119 yards. Um, it calculates a little rollout, which you didn't get, you know, eight yards of roll there. You got maybe two or three because it went really high and stopped fast. So if you look at what you just did with a driver at around 200 and what you did with the wedge, you're already ahead of the game. So when most people start this game, they don't get proper coaching. They just kind of muddle through it. They hit the ball all over the place, which then causes them to guide it causes them to lose all this weed whacking speed so they never get back to these numbers so that's your goal is always keep your mind clear of guiding manipulating if you're holding it properly and you swish it it will go straight that's where you have to get your mind wrapped around that one there flew high and straight no slice curve let's try another one that was really good let's see if we just got lucky right do some people call it a snap instead of a swish sure I yeah mean, uh, again, this yep. is, I think I saw it on TV, heard it on TV. Yeah, like a little snap of the wrist. Mm -hmm. I actually have a saber training tool, and the word snap is on my training tool because I want the ball to snap through the bottom of the swing. So I'll show you kind of what. Did you say saber? Saber, yeah. Like in, like in foil? Uh, yeah, saber? like a so yeah, sword. Mm hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, That's where the name foil, came from. And saber. Yeah. So the saber was, in my mind, what we did over here, the weed whacking, yeah. we just sword swiped, right? We were doing sw swishing motions. So in my head, when I tried to relay this to my students, I said, if I gave you a sword, and I said, we're gonna go to the highlands of Papua New Guinea with a machete, and you had to work your way through the forest, you'd be kind of chopping and swishing. It's basically what you just did there. So I'll show you the training tool here in a second. You can check it out. So relax the grip because we know we don't want to be squeezing super tight. And we want this swishing, snapping motion. There you go. Very good. All right. Then you kind of scoot yourself over, give it a good swish. There you go, two in a row. Now that's what you call a high draw, which people will spend their entire life not being able to hit. <laughs> and you just did it. So the simple truth of this is we have demystified, decomplicated this whole thing, right? Now, there's different levels of where you're going to get. You're going to have to understand how far all these tools go. They are all designed to go incrementally 10 to 15 yards different. For your club head speed right now, it's probably going to be about 10 yards. But that'll be part of your, pro you know, your journey, learning that kind of stuff. So now you got your driver, you're teeing off on the hole, get your grip, make it feel athletic, comfortable, the right hand's mostly in control, kind of pulling it back, swishing it through. Now you hit the ground a little, right? This club isn't designed to hit the ground, so let's swish it a couple inches off the ground. There you go. Good. There you go. Now you're playing golf. All right, so just so you know, and that one there, uh, Trackman says it carried, uh, let's see, 190 yards, basically, 187. It went to 228, right, based on the roll. And the 228 calculation is a little more accurate on the driver. Um, in theory, when golf courses are laid out and designed, a golfer that can hit the ball, a male golfer that can hit the ball 250 yards can become a zero handicap, a scratch golfer. Really? So you're right there, 230 on day one, <laughs> right? So here's the saber I was gonna show you, right? So take this, there's the, the word that says snap, right? On the end of it, okay. you see that? Whoa, yeah, it is heavy. That's a long drive version, so it's a little heavier than normal. So do your, you know, your weed whacking stance over here. You're not gonna hit the ground with this. You're gonna pull it back and just pause at the top. Yep, pull it back and wait for it. You hear that little ball? Yes. Now weed whack. You hear the click? All right, now click back the other way. Now pause and click back the other way. Pause and click back the other way. Yep. So now what's gonna happen is you're gonna get one of these that you're gonna train with. 
This is something that you can do at home. This is something that you can do at the course. It's gonna keep training your repetitive movement without having to get to the driving range, right? So you could have it at the office, have it at the house. When you're traveling, you've got one in each place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yeah, and it is, it's, it's creating a feel for what we're trying to do, but then the audio that you get from it kind of equates to that collision with the ball. Yep, so you pause and you snap it. There you go, you pause and you snap it. Good. Yep. So what happens is now when you use this tool is your muscles are gonna develop, you're gonna develop strength in the right places. I have no, I have no upper body muscles. Yeah, the, 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 the strength that you have is good because it's in the lower half and it's holding you on the ground. That's fantastic. So then the saber will complement your strong base to begin with. And then the swishing and the timing, the throwing part, that's what's gonna propel through the ball, right? So now if you've hit a couple of swings with that, now take the driver, it's gonna feel so much lighter, right? So now you just got your workout in, then you're gonna come up, take your stick and swish it through the air. There you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. So T1 up. Let's try another drive. And if you want, you can uh, swish it faster, right? Let's just see, like, see if see if you can, like, think that that weed is a much uh, thicker trunk to it. Like right? we're thinking it's now it's a sagebrush. It's not just a piece of grass. So see if you can create even more speed through that. Mm -hmm. Good, right? So we created more speed, but what we also did is we lost a little stability, right? So you notice where you finished, you kind of lost your footing, you kind of spun around a little bit, mm -hmm. and then the strike got kind of up in the air. So here's the difference. I didn't capture swing speed on the previous one. That was uh, almost 90 miles an hour, that one which is really good because that will start to produce drives closer to 250, which is what we want. <clears throat> Problem is you already hit one 228 and that one only went 208. So your stability compromised the collision. So <clears throat> we want the hands and arms and wrists to create all the speed, but we don't want it at a cost of losing balance. So let's create that good speed again, but see if you can use your, your legs, hips to rotate, kind of lock in. Yeah, so relax the arms, be able to pull back, fast swish. There you go. Good. Yeah, hover it in the air. <laughs> Someone will say, ah, oh, Eric, that's the straightest drive you hit all day. <laughs> There you go. Now keep your eye on the ball. Don't look for it down range. Hover, 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 higher. Uh, uh, uh. You weren't in the right spot. You didn't hover at the right height, <clears throat> right? So just like in your profession, obviously that precision is key, right? So right here, don't, don't allow yourself to compromise this, right? Yes, this is hovered. Yes, this is hovered, but it's not hovered there, right? Let's be, let's be sweet spot, mindful there of where exactly that hover needs to be. There you go. Now hover even in practice, right there is good. There you go, good. So that was very precise, I think, I like that. Good, so let's see what the speed was like. Yep. So 86 speed on that one, it went 203 because the collision, the club face was opened up because we were late with that throw. That snapping was late, right? So we'll grab the saber and I'll show you how to work on that. All right, so you take the saber, hold it at the light snap end, right? Do your grip, kind of get a nice comfortable stance, pull the arms back and just pause. Now, the click of the ball is where this all takes place. Click it over here for me. So snap it and make it click earlier. There you go. 
So now that would be the correction for what you just did. So go back and stop because what you did was when you came through on that previous one, you came down, 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 and then clicked it. After the ball. After. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So pull it back and pause. Click it sooner. I'm going to say even just a fraction sooner than that. Yep. Just a little bit sooner. Good wind up. Relax the arms, hands. Click it sooner. There you go. So there's more effort, right? Because it's a longer club, what happens is we have to do this effort sooner because the lever is longer. In my trick shot show, I, I have, um, I do trick shot exhibitions and I use a, I have a deep sea fishing pole with a club head on the end of it. So it stretches from here to that bag stand. <laughs> so as I swing it and I come all the way around over here, I have to, e yeah, you have to extend it here because it's like oh, push, 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 push. Yeah, it's the timing of that, yep. So when you set up this one, now that you've trained it a couple of times, set up another ball on the tee. Let's see in practice if we can get that snap to happen a little sooner with the driver. And what that'll do is that'll help it to square up. So go ahead and take that nice comfortable stance. Big rotation. Be a little bit more forceful in the beginning part to get it to snap before. Yeah, there you go. Let's try that. Yep. There you go. So we straightened it out. So you're learning a super important lesson here is that this straight thing isn't really about like guiding the face, like trying to mm, guide yeah, it straight. Guide anything. It's timing of that. If you timed it late, you're going to glance it off to the right. Time it early, you're going to square it up. All making sense? You need me? All day. All day? Yeah. All right. Um, we've got a group hoping to use this set of rentals, but... Oh, this set? What time yeah. do they tee off? Uh, I want to say 11.30. What time is it now? Like 11.05. You can take them. We'll just use these these oh, uh, these clubs. I don't You're not to playing to today, right, Eric? I don't want to uh, mess no. you guys up. I'm with, I'm take. with you for these yep. two hours. We have clubs. Okay. Take You're those. Sorry to take them away it's from right. you. <laughs> <laughs> yep, no worries. What's so special about them? Um, They're just the only ones we have. Oh, really? <laughs> rental sets and this yeah. particular group has eight people and only brought four of their own bag. Oh, I see. That's so, <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, sorry, Mark. I was talking to you. Yeah, there you go. All right. So now that's a seven iron. So you haven't tried that one yet. Okay. So let's do some swishes. Because now the, the length, kind of this angle thing's changed a little bit. The idea is you're going to take that comfortable setup with your hands. Give me some swishes. There you go. All right, we're looking for a little collision. So the angle of that swish changes. We're trying to hit a little bit of grass. There you go. Okay. All right, so if it goes too deep, the angle must have been a little too vertical. There you go. All right, so let's put one here on a nice little patch of grass. Always when you practice, put your ball on a good lie. Don't put it in a hole. Yep, nice and relaxed. Pull it up. Give me a swish. Okay, so what happened? Um, it was um, uh, too vertical. Yep, too vertical and potentially too close, which okay. the, those two things go together, right? Okay. So if you're a little too close, it may cause you to go a little bit more up and down so we back up just a tiny bit which allows us to go a little bit flatter with that that swish there you go there you go good setup okay all right now the first one golf term would be you hit it fat don't know where that came from but that's hitting the ground first is hitting it fat hitting that is thin Maybe it started with hitting thin, and then someone said, well, what's the opposite of thin? It's fat. We'll call it fat. So you hit the top of the ball, which means same rules apply. Where you, you could have been too far away, and then the plane and the swish couldn't maybe reach. But we're, now we're only talking like quarters and halves of inches. 
So I wouldn't make too big of an adjustment from that last setup. So try about that same degree of reach. I'm gonna kind of work on that swish the same way. Nice backswing, good throw with the club. Okay, very good. And again, nice little draw. So when the ball goes out to the right for a right-handed golfer and it turns back to the left, that's called a draw. When it goes out to the right, that's a slice or a fade. You're hitting draws and you're not even trying to hit draws. You're just swinging, right? That's, that's really cool. Hit one more and then we'll try a different club. We'll go back to the driver again. Yep, it's a good setup. Mm -hmm. Yep, so it's this kind of this balancing act of how far do I stand and how vertical do I throw? And once you kind of get it, then you try it with the ball. Okay, little thin little draw. That's all right, let's try again. You wanna get a drink of water? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to be at it for a while today. So is this all making good sense? Yeah, yeah. It's I just have to prevent myself from reverting back to what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Like, uh, like you said, as a good student, you may be recalling stuff as you get back out to the range that you maybe learned in your first lesson, which is quite different than what you've gotten here, right? So we want to keep it as simple as possible and keep the yep. stick swishing weed whacking concept. And this won't change. We'll, we'll refine it over time, but this is exactly how you're supposed to propel that tool. All right, so now as you do the swishes, remember what we did with the saber. Try to picture the timing of that, that click of the saber. That was, that was better, right? A little sooner, a little more uh, push at the beginning. There you go. I like that. Yep. Good one. Good hover. Okay. All right. So what happened there? We lost a little stability in the feet, right? You feel you just moved a little bit as you were creating force, compromised your collision just a little bit. Try another one. Doing a little too much James Brown. Yeah. Yeah. A little too much dancing there. So tee it right here for me if you wouldn't mind so we can get the radar to capture it kind of right right there. There you go. Yep. Good. So go like this for me, kind of waggle the wrist, and you feel like, okay, I'm about to swish this thing. Are my hands on there good enough for me to do that? There you go. Good. Okay, it's good, creating good speed, right? So that was uh, 90 miles an hour. You like that? Yep, I like that. I like 90. It's a good starting point for you, and then the more saber work and the more just golf swings in general you make, the stronger your arms are going to get. Um, no tee? Yeah, tee it up. Oh, no, sorry, it's a 7, so no tee. Yep, drop it right there. So that drive went 214, which is good. There you go. Okay. So what do you think happened there? Mm, did I lift my head up too high? You got the speed, speed wobbles, right? Got the speed wobbles. So everything's attached. Our head is attached to our feet. If our feet push, if our knees straighten, if our hips straighten, we come up. So golfers are around the world will say, oh, you picked your head up. You lifted your head. Well, I moved my whole body. You moved too, everything. Too quickly. Yeah. So there was some so. loss in stability. So through the motion, you created arm speed, which is good. You're not going to get, um, you know, 90 miles an hour necessarily out of the seven iron. It's heavier when you flung it pretty fast there. You got what I call the speed wobbles the energy that you was produced, because you're not just swinging a one pound club, you're swinging 10 pounds of left arm, 10 pounds of right arm. You, you might have 22 pounds flinging through there. The rest of you has to balance that 22 pounds of centrifugal force with angular momentum and all this cool stuff, right? So as you do the swishes, just ground yourself just a little better with your feet, hips, knees, everything. 
as you do your practice swings, find a speed where you can create, you know, good snap, but not lose balance. Yeah, there you go. Nice. There it is. Nice high shot. Had a little fade, baby fade to it. Did you see it? What's the fade mean? Went just a little bit oh. to the right instead of that draw that went a little to the left. So the timing was a little late on that one. But the contact was very good. Swing speed was 76 miles an hour. And the shot went um, 142 in the air. We like in, uh, in air numbers on irons because that's kind of like, or with this game, we're playing darts. We're just trying to drop it on the green. <clears throat> Total rollout numbers are good for longer clubs, drivers. 77 is really good. We should see at a professional level, um, 15 to 20 mile an hour jump from a seven to a driver. Right, so you were at 90 and you just swung that at 78. I think your potential there is closer to 98. But 90 is good, 90 is right there in that acceptable range. When I only see a 10 mile an hour jump from my students, say from 78 to 88, it's a little on the low side. Okay. You've already gone above that, but your goal would be to get this thing to 98, maybe even 100, that would be good. Because now you're hitting that 250, 260 yard drives. You're out driving the guys that have been playing golf for their whole life that you're playing with. So let's do the seven iron again. That was really good. Now the little mini adjustment might be like the saber snap. Let's see if we can have a little more effort in the early part, snap it a little sooner. So a really good stability because without the stability, we don't get good contact. So we want good stability. There you go. And a little earlier on the snap of the hands. There it is. Really, really good contact. We didn't get a draw or a fade. We just got a straight ball, which was really good. Uh, radar says, yep, that makes sense. It went in 150 in the air. So it went a few more yards because any amount of that side spin and height and curve that you got, which wasn't much, it was just optimized here so it was a very straight ball so it went further we didn't get a swing speed number but we can imagine it's probably very similar okay so uh, i'm going to wrap up the video thoughts what's what's been your big takeaways like what's the easiest thing that you've learned or most impactful thing that we can capture um relaxing the hands not squeezing it so tight uh, lining up the ball the proper height with the driver you're above the ground yeah um also keeping that um uh, uh leg stability mm -hmm. and center of gravity i guess mm -hmm. um and uh snapping and snapping it earlier than i would have normally anticipated yeah and not being preoccupied with lining up the ball mm. as my arms go through, <laughs> yeah as my right arm goes through or my left arm trying to guide it right it's, it's just going if you hit it right yeah, it's just it's just click, right? We we kind of do this in uh, uh, moving ball sports, so we're not trying to be as precise. You know, we kind of accept that in baseball, if we make this wild swing and we just happen to connect, it hopefully goes somewhere into the field, right? We're we're not as being as precise in golf. We have this narrow hallway, this obstacle course that we have to navigate. So we kind of get locked into this idea that we're having to guide this thing down there. But that's why the ball's not moving. You can imagine playing golf with a moving ball and trying to navigate a course. It would be impossible, right? So now what you're finding is that if you stand correctly and you grip well and it's powerful and comfortable in your hands, now the accuracy portion is just more based on the timing part. And we definitely have to get this out of our mind that we're guiding and directing that ball down the fairway. Um, let's try a shorter club because I want to do, before I wrap up the video, I just remembered I want to do a couple pitches. So let's take a, let's take a 54 degree, okay? And typically when you have to hit a, 
a shorter shot in this game, um, there's a high percentage of times it's in the rough. So you were hitting like cleaner strikes off the fairway grass. Now, <clears throat> as you get in closer to the target, the power level has to change. We can't, you know, hit this as hard as we can because that particular club, if you hit it as hard as you can, it's probably going to go to that second white flag mm. somewhere in that distance. That's too far. Yeah, around 100 yards. If we're just going short to this first flag, we've got to figure that out. So the nuance here is it's still a snap. It's still a throw. It's just an easy throw. So do your setup, and I'll guide you through kind of how much effort I want you to put into it. So it's a shorter backswing because you don't, don't need as much potential there but you're still throwing, it's still a snapping, you're still mowing, just like you're doing there, you're mowing the rough. Now we're just gonna let the ball be, you know, sitting on top of the rough that we're mowing down. So I think I like that speed. Let's see if we can uh, step up to the ball there and create that same type of throw. There you go. All right, so it dropped in there around 40, 50 yards nice and high. So now we can actually play the game because the game portion of it is take this white ball and navigate an obstacle course. In this case, if you do this little snap of the hands, you're going to be able to flick it up over a bunker, over a tree, you know, any number of different obstacles. Oops. Right? So what happened, you think? Probably all subconscious. Did I open, did I open up the club? Yeah, what happened, what I witnessed was you, you tried to help it a little, mm. right? Like I just described a few things. It you wasn't were, a swing. Yeah, yeah, you were going to jump a bunker, you were going to jump a tree. And so what I noticed in your hand action, even on a subconscious level, is as you came through, it's almost like you tried to scoop it. Yeah, I've done that before. Yeah, right? And that's what we think. We have this club. In order for us to get it in the air and up high, we have to help it. Have to. No, the engineers have done trillions of dollars probably at this point on R&D to make this easy, <laughs> okay. right? So it's a stick. It's a stick with a different angle. And so then when you flick your hands, just like that first one, it's going to jump. You don't have to do anything to help it. Yeah, good. Let's keep that repetitive type swish. Just swish. There you go. Right. It's going to do it. So big takeaway here, that's why I wanted to get into this club is because every club has a purpose. And as you learn the game and you go on this journey, you're gonna feel like you'll learn these distances that they all go. So now let's do it faster, right? Let's do a harder, more aggressive swish. Well, uh, I wasn't sure, I was, I was Ball just got in the way. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe your friends will let you have a do-over on that one. There you go. Well, you know them better than I do. <laughs> Probably not. Oh, th no mercy? No mercy. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah, try to help it just a tiny bit. So just create that swish. You're, you're, you're doing such a good job of mowing the grass. <clears throat> but when the ball gets there, you kind of lose sight of the grass mowing. Coming a little closer. Yep, yeah, there you go. Mow that grass. There you go. Really good. You know what I noticed the past couple that I've been doing? Mm. And I don't know if that I'm probably not correct. Mm -hmm. Is I'm doing, as you say, mowing. And then at the very end, I was doing this. Yeah. What's that? Don't know. What's, Just not do that. It's like, it's like <laughs> subliminally helping it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. purpose. No. Yeah, just keep that stick going through, just like the driver, kind of hinging and swishing. Yep. Yeah, because even in your practice swings, you don't do that. You just swish it through there. Uh -huh. Yep. So the timing, right? There's a collision. So let's go back to this one. Go back to the seven. Now that we've done those easy swings, I'm going to put you in the rough again with a seven. And then you're just going to do an easy seven versus a hard seven, right? So nice and easy like that. A couple easy practice swings first. Pulling it back, kind of giving it a flick. There you go, nice. Yep. All right, so what happened, you think? I 
looked up or my whole body moved up something st stability stay wise. Down. there you go my body didn't stay down yeah you got the wobbles because of some weird reason right we don't really care we just know we just don't want to do it yep stay stable just use the arm swing swish it through there there it is much better all right so there's this direct correlation between what goes on balance and movement and up and downs versus collision a ball sitting still it's not a big ball and the thing we're hitting it with is not a big surface if we get out of the way with our body then it's going to be make it make it a lot harder right now the largest club hit in the bag is the driver because that's the one we're equipped to swing the fastest we got a little bit of forgiveness in that design so that we can swing it really fast and it goes far the club head sizes don't really change so compare those two right not really much different in the actual size but it's just the angle change so this one i have in my hand is a 56 i think 54 so this 54 degree look at the length change mm. not a ton yeah. right and then the seven iron that you have there maybe is close to like 30 degrees 30 35 degrees somewhere in there so it's 20 degrees never never you can up. if you're trying to reduce some of the power oh. right so that lever is going to give you more potential for speed you have to be really close to super close in very delicate little shot so i'm going to stop this part of the video the full swing part and then i think we can go do some putting kind of okay. talk about that part okay. anything in the short shots that you want to add to the video um again maintaining the uh, body balance yeah not s sitting up or moving your body up too prematurely yeah prematurely yeah and um just uh doing the same swing your practice swing doing it with the ball and don't be intimidated by visualizing the ball in front of you yeah yeah and then we carry that further to being intimidated by stuff in front of you like lakes and water has you know trees and bunkers and you know native areas and just ignore them yeah the more you At can just yeah more you can commit to just kind of repeating this balanced balanced body swishing arms that's going to set you in the right direction is that where his swish came from or that wasn't that <laughs> from yeah i don't know that one i don't know the swish. nike swish um yeah, so the, 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 the movement that you're doing is great. You should know that you're ahead of the game now. You were about to go down a little bit of a downward spiral with some of the Jumping stuff. The <laughs> so now you're going to be able to jump in and enjoy the game and hit some great shots, right? Um, part of this game is the like the, this movie, um, Tin Cup. Have you seen that Tin Cup with Kevin, Ke Kevin Costner? Costner? So he has this one line in there where, where he's um, coaching. I think it's Renee Russo, maybe. He's, he's coaching her, and he comes up with this line where, you know, striking a perfectly struck golf shot is like the tuning fork going off in your loins. Like he has this poetic way of saying this is awesome, right? And so that's, that's the ball striking part. You've got the ball hitting. When you strike it well you don't really feel it like it comes off like a rocket and it feels smooth and effortless when you hit it poorly it feels horrible it jars your body and it goes left and right and all over the place so there's a joy that you can get i mean that's why we have people out here hitting they're trying to find that joy every time get it more frequently so that's there's no substitute there you do your saber saber practice when you can't get to the range in between appointments whatever it is you're kind of working your swing then you've got the golf playing part where you're now navigating that little ball through the obstacle course so that's another completely different part of the journey this part matters but when you're playing with friends and you're trying to keep score and all that kind of stuff it's it becomes a lot more um, intellectual game a lot more strategy a lot more kind of understanding distances playing yardages all that kind of stuff so i'm excited for you i think this was great um but to be honest, you started out just like most people I see, but you ended quite a bit better than a lot of brand new golfers I see. So that's really, that's really good for you. So this video turned out to be, let's see, 54 minutes. Is it okay if I put it on YouTube? You'll, you'll just have to um, get it cleared through my agent. Perfect. Perfect. We'll get, we'll get that good. NDA or something, right? Um, I'll put it on there because it's too hard to um, airdrop. It, it'll eat up all your memory on your phone. 
Um, and then that way you can watch it anytime, anywhere, run through some of this stuff, okay. use the Sabre. I'll get, make sure you get one of those either shipped home or here, um, have one in both places where you're able to work out with it. Then we need to talk about clubs at some point because yes. you don't have a set, right? Yeah, and it's each time we do that, uh, I come out, I just start from scratch. <laughs> yeah. And, and then they steal them under my <laughs> They stole it. I can't believe they stole those clubs. Um, but yes, uh, we definitely need to get you a set ordered um, so that you have something that's forgiving and easy to swing. Do you have a recommendation? I do. I'll, I'll, I'll come up with something for you. Um, so let's go putt. Let's okay. do that. Great. Thank you. Thank you for